What's up everyone, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel for the best reviews in TV boxes and accessories. Today's model is from KickPie, a new brand that has emerged on the market, offering fully Google certified models to watch your favorite movie subscriptions in HD and 4K, featuring Google Chromecast and Google Assistant. This is the KickPie KP1 and Logic S 905Y4 4K TV box. So without further ado, let's see what the KP1 has to offer. And that begins right after this. Welcome back. As usual, in this package, you get the KP1 TV box model, a Bluetooth voice remote with Google Assistant and dedicated app buttons, one HDMI cable. Interestingly, it comes with a 12 volts, 1.5 amps DC power supply. And finally, you have your user manual. So for its design, its shell is made of plastic and it has one HDMI 2.1 port, one USB Type-C port, and that explains the 12 volts to power connected devices. It has a non-gigabit LAN port, one optical audio, one AV port, and its DC power socket to the rear. On the side has two USB 2.0, a reset button and a micro SD card reader. At the front, it has a single LED power light and below it has no anti skid rubber pads and no ventilation holes. As mentioned, the box is fully Google certified, which means when you start for the first time, you will be presented with the Google TV first startup wizard, after which you are presented with the Google TV interface. So this is the Google TV launcher and from constantly seeing these models, you already know what you will get from Google TV as is now widely available on many televisions. So to focus on what's important, you should know that it's running on Android 11 Hailstorm version and it has a Netflix ESN license. So this means you can watch Netflix in HD and 4K with Dolby Atmos with your HD subscription. It can also run Prime Video, Disney Plus, Peacock and Max all in HD and 4K. It's fully certified with the highest level of Google HDMI signal protection. So if you open your DRM information app, it will show that it has Google Wide Vine level one with HDCP 2.3 protection. This also means that the operating system is not rooted. It comes with your standard Google TV features such as the built-in Chromecast and a Google Assistance feature. What's the fastest car in the world? Koenigsegg Jesko Absolute, according to Haycar, the fastest production car in the world in terms of projected figures is the Koenigsegg Jesko Absolute. You should also know that side loading of APKs is permitted, but it can only be performed by downloading your APK onto the box's internal storage, such as the downloads folder, and installing from there. Any attempts to install from external storage will be blocked by the Google Play protection feature. So those are your signature certified Google TV features. And when I say certified, I mean that it was inspected and granted a Google license for consumer usage, which also means that it's free of malware. Here, I performed a scan using the Bitdefender mobile security app and the device is reported as being clean. For compatibility with your displays and audio devices, you get up to 4K 2160p at 59.94Hz as detected by my capture card. It has HDR display with an auto HDR feature. You can also turn off HDR for compatibility with non-HDR TVs. You get up to 12-bit YCBCR 422 color space. It has HDMI CEC control and I've tested this feature and it works when you turn off the box, the TV automatically shuts off or goes into standby mode and wakes together with the box. And for convenience, you can also manually configure the remote to control your TV's power, volume and input source function. My TV is a TCL brand and here I've configured these functions to buttons on the remote. For audio, you can enable or disable optical audio. You have a dialog enhancer and the option to enable or disable surround sound audio, which formats are supported, we'll see in just a moment. It has a screen saver option and it comes in 75 various languages. 
For watching YouTube videos, you get up to 4K 2160p at 60Hz with HDR. For playing self-hosted videos stored on external storage in formats such as HDR10, HDR10+, HLG, AV1, and Dolby Vision, with its included video decoders, it can play HDR10, HDR10+, AV1, and HLG. It cannot activate the Dolby Vision feature on your TV due to the lack of Dolby Vision decoders. So here it plays HDR10. Next, it plays an AV1 video without issues. Here it attempts to play a Dolby Vision video but it registers as HLG. Here it plays a Dolby Vision video with Dolby Atmos and it cannot process the audio, only video. Here it plays an HDR10 Plus video. This is an HLG video. And this video is Dolby Vision, but it cannot process the correct audio. Is intended to demonstrate. To listen to the Dolby Atmos soundtrack, please set your Blu-ray player to bitstream out. For surround sound audio, even though you saw that it has Dolby Atmos on Netflix, when it comes to self-hosted videos, it's limited to what it can process. In testing my list of Dolby and DTS formats, it appears that the box is configured to only output Dolby Atmos and Dolby Digital Plus. You don't get Dolby Surround from Dolby Vision Videos, Dolby True HD, DTS HD Master Audio, or DTS X. So here it outputs Dolby Atmos. It can also output Dolby Digital Plus. You get no audio when you play a DTS HD Master audio video. The same can be said for Dolby Vision videos. When you play a Dolby True HD video, it registers as Dolby Surround or Dolby Digital Plus. We have the center channel. And when you play a DTS X video, you get no audio. In testing its gaming performance, I would rate it as being average being able to play Shadowkan Legends on medium graphic settings, but it's by no means a high performance gaming chipset, so it's best you stick to medium to low graphics games. So now that you have seen all you can do, let's take a look at its hardware information. So the chipset used in this model is Amlogic and it was manufactured by SEI Robotics. It runs on 2GB of DDR4 RAM and 32GB of internal storage with Bluetooth version 5.0. Its CPU is the Amlogic S905Y4 Quad-Core Cortex-A35 processor clocked at 2.0 GHz configured in 32-bit mode with support for only 32-bit apps and games. Its display is powered by the Mali G31 graphics processor with OpenGL version 3.2 support. Its network adapter is a dual-band 2.4 plus 5 GHz AC Wi-Fi adapter, but it does however connect to my Wi-Fi 6 router. Its operating system is Android 11. Under Devices, it shows that it has Vulkan Support API version 1.1. You cannot monitor its temperature because they blocked the temperature sensor. It has video decoders such as H.264, HEVC, VP9, and AV1, 
and for surround audio it has Dolby Atmos EAC3 and DTS HD. However, as you saw in the audio segment, you don't get DTS. There are also no Dolby Vision decoders. And now a look at some benchmarks and where it ranks on my chart. First, its RAM and internal storage comes in with a RAM copy speed of 3,866 megabytes per second, 108 megabytes per second internal storage read speed, and 66 megabytes per second write speed. Next, its Wi-Fi and Ethernet LAN speeds performance when tested against my network of 315 megabits per second resulted in the 5 GHz band achieving the maximum speed, the 2.4 GHz band achieved an average of 100 Mbps, and the LAN port, which is not a gigabit LAN port, averaged around 94 Mbps. Its CPU's single-core and multi-core performance registered scores of 111 single-core and 324 multi-core in the Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark. In the graphics benchmark, it couldn't complete any of the wildlife tests freezing up during each test, and it could only complete the Slingshot Extreme test with a score of 334. And in the comprehensive Antutu benchmark, it scored 89,227. So with these benchmarks, it ranks at position 48 with a 3 out of 5 star rating at the time of making this video, and this is determined by its Antutu benchmark score. To view this chart to compare the rest of its features to other boxes in this list, use the link provided in the description below this video. It is best viewed on a desktop or laptop where you can maximize it and compare its various benchmarks and features, and I also provide purchase links right here. This list is also very helpful in determining which is the best TV box to purchase, so use the link in the description. In summary, the KP1 is a good box that I would recommend if you are looking for a certified model that's cheaper than big name brands that offers the same level of protection and can stream movie services in HD and 4K with Dolby Atmos. It runs on the Amlogic chipset, so performance is guaranteed. Cons to take into consideration are that it only has 2GB of RAM, even though it can play some Android games, it's not a gaming model, and it cannot play some surround sound audio formats such as DTS Audio and Adobe True HD. Currently, this model is only sold on AliExpress and on their website using the links I provided in the description, and it's not yet available on Amazon and other retail stores. So to take advantage, use the link in the description, which is also an affiliate link, which means you provide a monetary support to this channel when you use my links to purchase, so thanks in advance for your support. For a chance to receive this box as a giveaway, first, follow my channel by clicking the subscribe button and ringing the notifications bell. You then send me an email confirming your subscription along with your location. I will then confirm your subscription and at the end of the month, I will send you a reply email confirming if you were selected to receive the giveaway. And in case you missed it, I will post it as a YouTube post. So click the subscribe button, ring the notifications bell, Confirm your subscription via email and stay connected to be notified if you were selected to receive the giveaway. And please note, no begging or trolling is allowed as this behavior will disqualify your chance to receive the giveaway. So viewers, I've come to the end of this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe, stay connected and see you in the next one.